Welcome to the DABL Coffee Cup Games. This is the Diamond Association of Baseball Legends using Stratomatic. Yo, what's up? This is Coach DK. So we're going to go ahead and uh, do another game from the year 1900. We are actually into the second weekend. This is probably the last time I'm going to do two games per weekend. I was thinking about doing a Saturday and a Sunday game, but I just thought... <clears throat> if I do it that way, you know, a National League game on Saturday, an American League game on Sunday, we're talking about 50-some games just during the regular season. I'd rather cut that in half, try to be right around that 25 range, and then get into the playoffs, which I think will be more interesting. So this will be the last time we're going to do a double weekend game. Um, so we got the Kansas City Blues versus the Milwaukee Creams, a game that I'm actually looking forward to. Kansas City Blues um, are leading the entire Major League with a 6-1 record. Um, we played with them before, um, helping them get the win. Uh, but they're going against the Milwaukee Creams, who are currently 3-4. and four. So just to look back at the year 1900 in the American League, the Milwaukee Creams came in second place. They were 79-58. and 58. And so... Um, the Kansas City Blues, on the other hand, they were in six with a 69 and 80 record, kind of close to 500, but they are starting off the season hot right now. And so we're going to be doing uh, the home team, which obviously is the Milwaukee Creams. For the Kansas City Blues, we have uh, starting, leading off Jay Farrell. We got Wagner, Dungan. Cleanup will be Hemphill, Gear, Coughlin, Schaefer. McManus, and then pitching will be Patton. On the field, you have um, McManus behind the plate. You got Dungan on first, Schaefer at second, Coughlin at third, Wagner at short. You got Hemphill in left, Gear in center, and Farrell in right. And again, Patton will be on the mound. For the Milwaukee Creams, you got Conroy at short leading off. You got Dowd, who is playing left second. You got Anderson batting third, who will be playing first base. You have Fultz, who will be batting fourth at second base. You have Waldron, the right fielder, batting fifth. Smith, the catcher, batting sixth. Burke, third baseman, batting seventh. Ketchum, the center fielder, batting eighth. And then, obviously, Rube Waddell is going to be pitching and batting ninth. So let's just go ahead and look at the pregame stuff. I know it's probably hard to see on your screen, but they always give us a little bit of a game note ahead of time. And so we have um, Patton, who has one start. He is a 1-0. He does have um, a 5.59 ERA. Waddell, this is going to be his first start. He is a 1-1 in only seven innings pitched, but he has a 1.29 ERA. And has five strikeouts in those seven innings. That might be one of the league leaders, to be honest with you. I'm not really sure. Um, the We were playing at the Lloyd Street Grounds. It is a daytime game. Um, in this game, you have a couple hitters who have uh, some hitting streaks. Uh, the longest being O'Brien for Kansas City with six games. And then um, the hottest hitters is uh, Coughlin and Farrell from Kansas City and Spies from Milwaukee. And then, so let's just go ahead. We have no injuries going on in the game. And so let's see what we got here. All right, as mentioned, we're playing at the Lloyd Street Grounds. So let's go ahead and let's get started. Rube Odell is going to pitch, and the first pitter, Farrell, is going to go ahead and hit a single. And he gets a 5 with the 1 to 12 option. Of 
Wagner is going to get up, and unfortunately, there's a pass ball. Smith lets one go by him. It's going to be a ground ball to shortstop Conroy. Great range. Takes the out at first, holding the runner at second. Ground ball to Fultz. It's going to be a ground out to second base, 4 3. Two outs, and Hemp Hill is going to pop out to Fultz. Leading off for us is going to be Conroy. Conroy is going to go ahead and fly ball to center field. And Dowd is going to get struck and out. Next up is Anderson in our number three. He's going to hit a ground ball to third base. Close play, but he's out. So one, two, three. So not much action in the first inning, minus the pass ball. What up pitches the gear, and Greer is going to ground out the third. Coughlin's going to be up. He's also going to ground out the third, making two outs. What else is now going to pitch to Schaefer, who is going to single to center field. Next up is McManus, who is also going to hit a single. Putting runners on the corners, and now the pitcher is up. And there's going to be a strikeout. So Waddell gets out of uh, a little bit of a dangerous situation. Now betting for us is going to be Fultz. He's going to ground ball to the pitcher. And they get him out. Waldron's going to be up. He's going to pop out to the third baseman. Two down. Next up is Smith, and he's going to grind out to the first baseman. So, so far, Patton has not allowed anybody on base. And now we enter the top of the third. It's going to be a foul out. Uh, behind home plate to the catcher. Waddell gets another strikeout. So that will be two for the game for him. Seven for the season. And then... The third out is going to go with the ground ball out of fault. So this is, seems to be a little bit of a pitching duel right now. Burke's going to be up. And he is going to fly out to left field, it looks like. Ketchum's up. And has a chance for a hit. But Dunga makes a nice play. So now Rube Waddell, see if he can help his own sake. And the first runner is allowed on base with a walk. Bringing up Conroy. He also is going to get a walk, so first and second, Doyd is going to be up, and he's going to line out. So after three innings, um, Patton has not allowed any hits, though he has given up two walks. Waddell is up on the mound with Hemfield at the plate. This is going to be a line ball to right field. And that will be an out. Gear is going to go ahead and get a single, looks like. And Coughlin's going to ground ball to second base. It's going to be a four, six, three, a double play. So no run scored yet. Patton now on the mound going against Anderson. And there's a strikeout, his second strikeout of the game. Patton now is going to pitch against Fultz, and he's going to pop out. Looks like the first base. And now Waldron's up, and a third strikeout. This is a pitching duel for sure. Waddell is up against Schaefer. Oh, and he comes back with a strikeout. So I believe each pitcher has three strikeouts now. Uh, Waddell's up on the mound again. He's going to Pitch to McManus. He's going to ground ball to second base with an easy 4 3. And Patton's going to line out the faults. So 1, 2, 3. No damage done. Patton is going to be on the mound going against the Creams Smith, our catcher. And the first hit for the Creams. 
Harper is going to be up. We'll let him swing away, see what we can get here. And he's going to fly ball to center field. Catch him's up. <clears throat> By far our worst hitter. And he's going to line out. Luckily he went to the pitcher's card. I think it's more of a chance there. Waddell is up. He has a walk the first time at bat. He's going to hit the ball to shortstop. To Wagner. And there is an air. So runners. Two base air. Allowing runners now on second and third. Top of the order. Conroy is up. See if we can get anything to done. Fly the ball to right field, and we do not have much speed there. And that would have been two outs already, so that was the third out. Helps if you know how many outs there are. All right, so Waddell is up. And he is going to get out with a line ball to shortstop. Go down now pitches to Wagner and another strikeout. His fourth for the game, I believe. Yep, fourth strikeout of the game. Dungan is going to hit a single. Putting runner on base, two outs. And Pill is up. Oof. That was only a single option there. Runners on first and third. All right, gear is up. The number five hitter, center fielder. He is batting 308 this year, and 13 at bait and 13 at bats. So let's see what Waddell can do here. Ooh. So it looks like Hempo was trying to steal. Unfortunately, he got picked off at first, getting us out of the inning. So, thank you, Hemp Hill, for being a moron. All right, Doyd is going to line out. Anderson is up. And he is going to hit a double. Getting him to second. Fultz is now up. That's only our second hit of the game. Oh, and the strikeout. He, Patton, now has four strikeouts. And a rifle shot that is snagged. All right, and it's time for our player in the news. So we got Rube Waddell, who is obviously the pitcher in this game, the left-hander. Uh, Rube Waddell uh, debuted with the Pittsburgh Pirates in 1900 uh, this season. However, um, because of his erratic behavior um, and acting like a little bit of an idiot at times, the manager for the Pirates, Fred Clark, decided to suspend him for two months. And he uh, pitched a few games in some semi-pro um, ball and some small towns such as Puxatawney, which you may know from Groundhog Day, Puxatawney Phil, um, if you've ever seen the movie Groundhog Day with Bill Murray. Um, but um, the Milwaukee Brewers manager, Connie Mack, so you may know of Connie Mack, Hall of Famer, um, future um, manager of the Philadelphia franchise, um, actually had the stadium named after him. Um, learned of Rube's availability, and so asking for Pittsburgh's approval, um, which they had given, Matt convinced Waddell to pitch for Milwaukee um, for several weeks in the summer of 1900. Um, Waddell was probably the best pitcher in the American League while he was there for those few months. Um, and in one of the games on August 19th, in 1900, Waddell pitched the opening game of a doubleheader for Milwaukee, um, a game that lasted 17 innings, which Waddell eventually won by getting an RBI when he hit a triple. Um, Mack needed Waddell because his pitchers retired and was so impressed with Waddell to pitch the second game of the doubleheader, which Waddell did not want to do, but 
Connie Mack, being quite the negotiator, said that if uh, Rube Waddell would pitch the second game, he would give him a three-day uh, fishing trip. Um, and so Waddell threw a complete game in the second um, game. He actually got the shutout for the victory, and then he headed to uh, Pewaukee Lake to go fishing. Um, shortly after that, Pittsburgh management realized how uh, talented Waddell was and immediately asked for his return, which by the end of the season, Waddell, who had started off a little bit rough um, at the beginning of the season in the National League, um, ended up having a great um, rest of the season and led the National League in our in ERA. So our player spotlight today was Rube Waddell, um, starting off his career in the year 1900, obviously pitching in this game and um, doing very, very well, um, having shut out innings, um, six innings um, so far. So let's just see how he can finish out the rest of the game. And now back to the action. So we got Waddell back on the mound, um, going against now Gear, the number five hitter. Gear is going to get a single to left field, bringing up Coughlin. Gear's looking to get a big lead, wasn't able to, and Coughlin pops out. <clears throat> Now brings up Schaefer and a strikeout. Five strikeouts for Waddell. McManus is now up and he is going to line out the first. So Waddell continues to keep the um, Blues off uh, away from the home plate. I'm thinking he had a couple of times runners were in scoring position. I think he had a guy on second after a pass ball. And then after two singles, he had a guys on first and third. But Waddell has been able to get out of it. Um, looks like he has given up seven hits, zero walks, five strikeouts so far. The question, trivia question of the day, for what major league club did Harmon Killebrew hit his final home run in 1975? Anyone have a clue? I am going to... Go with Minnesota. And the correct answer is Kansas City Royals. Um, so, obviously I got that one wrong. If you got that one right, you are the winner. I am the loser. If you did not, then you are just second place in winning which means first place in failing so let's get back to the action bottom of the seventh Patton's gonna be still on the mound going against our catcher Smith who is going to get a single his second hit of the day we now have Burke and we're gonna go ahead and try a hit and run here And unfortunately, it is just going to be an infield fly. So Ketchum is up. Um, our worst hitter, unfortunately. Don't have much of a bench. And it's going to be a strikeout. So Patton as well has five strikeouts now. He had only one coming into the game, and he's got five today. Rube Odell is going to be now on. And he's going to hit a single to right field. Apparently not deep enough for Smith to test uh, for third, but Conroy's up. He is 0 for 2 with a walk. He's going to hit a ground ball to third base. You never know in the year 1900 how it's going to be. And sure enough, it is an air loading up the bases, the second air by the Blues. And so we're going to uh, see what happens here. Dowd is up. He is 0 for 3. And he is going to hit a line out to end the inning. So top of the eighth. And now it's going to pitch to his counterpart, Patton, who is going to get out. Farrell, who singled in the first inning to lead off the game, gets his second single. Uh, 
liner to right field. And now Wagner is going to line out, making two down in the bottom, of, or assuming the top of the eighth. And Dungan's up, and he is going to get a walk. That is the first walk by Rube. Two outs, runs on first and second. And it is a pop out. And she chokes in the clutch. All right, now for us, it's going to be Anderson, bottom of the eighth inning. So far, all the games that we've had, minus the one when Kansas City blew out. <coughs> I don't remember who it was. It might have been Chicago. Um, the, I believe the, they played Chicago Invaders and we dominated that game. It might have been like a 10 to 3 game. But so far, all the other games have been very, very good. And Anderson is going to get a walk. We are going to try to steal. And he gets a lead and he barely beats the run. So he needed a 1 to 13. He got the 13. Pulse is up. And he's going to line out the short. Waldron is up and he is going to pop up behind home plate. And now Smith is up. They're going to intentionally walk him, bringing Burke up, who is 0 for 3. I'll take Burke over catch him, though. So, and unfortunately, he's going to ground out the pitcher, making himself over 4 out of the inning. Rue Waddell is past his pitch count. And he unfortunately gives out a single. Uh oh. Runners on first and third, no outs. Oh, they were able to hold him. G. Schaefer, so we could use a strike out here. He's going to bunt, advancing the runners. We are going to intentionally walk McManus, bringing in the pitcher, who I'm sure they're going to pitch hit. And they bring in John Ganzel. Bases loaded, top of the ninth, one out. Need something. And a short fly ball to right field. Wasn't sure if that was going to be far enough to uh, advance the runner, but it's not. So Farrell is up, the leadoff man. Two outs, top of the ninth. What I was trying to get out of this. And he does with another strikeout. Rube has been incredible. Ketchum is up. See if he can get started or anything. He cannot. We are going to go ahead and bring in a pitch, ritter, pitch hitter for Rube. Let's see who we got. Spies might be our best option. Remember, I me correctly. 25, 23, about Diggins, oh there was somebody I was looking at earlier who might have been Diggins, let's just go with Diggins. Alright, bring up Diggins into pitch hit. They bring in um, a new pitcher, Kid Carsey, apparently had come in um, the, for the inning, and now they're going to bring in Chummy Gray. I forgot that they had pitch hit, and unfortunately, it is going to be a ground out. All right, Conroy is up. Ooh. And he gets a double. Wait, what? Oh, dude, I really hate that guard the lines crap.
apparently I was also, um, so they brought in apparently the pitcher wrecker. That's frustrating to me. I'm not sure why we brought him in. Pop out the first base. I'm not sure who Wrecker is. Well, he was 7 and 11. He did have a 319 ERA and 176 innings, so he's not a scrub. But he does get one out, and he gets a second out with a pop out. And she's going through the heart of the lineup here. And a ground out to Wrecker. Good job, Connie Mack, with that decision. He apparently brought in the uh, pitcher. All right, Dowd is up. As we are continuing into the 10th inning with zero runs scored. Anderson gets a walk. I believe that may be his second one of the game. Gray does have a minus four arm at minus and minus two, so they're going to be at the minus five. So Anderson apparently was a one for 15. It's going to be dropped. Maybe it was one for 17. I don't know. Um, but they're definitely able to hold our guys on base. Let's go ahead and try to send the lead runner. And he is pegged. Risky play there. Ball to left field. We're trying to go for third. Tempil nails him. And they intentionally walk Haldron, bring Smith up, and he is going to line out. Entering the 11th inning now. I'll pop out. It is amazing how Milwaukee um, has only five hits, and they're the number two team in the league. Um, their pitching for any for Kansas City has been incredible. Uh, ground ball to short. Conroy is there. Fortunately, he kicks it, and we get a guy on base. Milwaukee's, that's our first air of the game. Line out. It's a two down, top of the 11th. Oh, my gosh. Chummy Gray, the pitcher. Okay. I was going to say, the pitcher is going to win this, but he is apparently... Um, those who know Stratomatic, you have two ratings, N and W, for your hitters. And so, in some situations, when you are a W weak hitter, power hitter, you do not get those home runs. You just turn into signals because they try to be realistic. So, runners on first and third. Wrecker is going to give up the first run. So they do score a run. We barely get out of that one. They must have got another one. Unfortunately. So we are down one nothing. Top of the eleventh. The Kansas City Blues got, I believe, three hits. Um maybe two hits in an air. But got three guys on, one of which scored. So it is a one nothing game. Bottom of the eleventh, our last chance. Burke is going to collect a walk. Catch him, you are going to bunt. All right, good. Catch him is our worst hitter by far, and so we definitely want to make sure he uh, does whatever he can to not have to swing. Yeah, you're just going to be up. So far this season, he is two for four. He is going to ground out the second. Advancing the runner. So it comes down to Conroy, who is 
0 for 4. He does have a walk, and he did uh, get on base off of an air by Coughlin, um, third baseman. So here it is. Can Gray win the game, or can Conroy continue? And he's going to be a line out, Schaefer. So the game is over. Uh, very, very good game. Extra innings, unfortunately, goes to the 11th inning. As a personal manager, that is my first loss. That sucked. Player of the game, I mean, you just got to give it to the entire pitching staff of the Blues, particularly um, Patton. Um, Patton pitched eight full innings. He had five strikeouts. He allowed eight guys on with four hits and four walks that he was responsible for. I don't think there were any errors. I think there were a couple of errors before while he was on the field, but four hits. Um, so I, I got to give the game um, ball to Patton. Um, the other one that might be a potential is Gear, the center fielder. He went three for five. Um, Farrell um, also would be another one. He went three for six and had the game winning RBI. Um, he's actually batting 405 for this season, so over 400. As you can tell, looking at the creams in there, average for the year, except for Smith, the catcher um, and the pitcher, obviously. Um, they don't have anybody over 300. So their pitching seems to be what's working for them. Their hitting seems to be really, really bad. Um, but a great, great game. Uh, let's